All right then, so on to the next data type that I want us to talk about, which is sets. And sets in Redis are an unordered collection of strings which all have to be unique. So you can't store duplicate strings in a set. Something like this wouldn't be allowed. So sets could be useful for doing something like storing all of the users currently online, for example, or tracking blocked IP addresses, or even making sure certain values like article titles are unique. In all these cases, we wouldn't want duplicate values to be stored, right? And I'm calling them values, but in Redis terminology, they're actually called members. So let's have a look at sets and see how they work in practice. Okay, so to begin with inside Redis Insight, I'm just gonna delete a bit of the data we have so far, just to keep everything nice and clean and we don't get muddled up with everything. So let's get rid of those. And then back to the workbench, let's go over here. We're gonna start working with sets. So how do we create a set? Well, we just basically add something to a set. And if that set doesn't already exist, then Redis is gonna create it for us anyway. So when we're working with sets, we say S first of all, then add, and you can see right here, we need a key and then a member, and then more members if we want as well. So for example, let's make a key called names, and we'll add one to this called Mario. So control enter, and we can see one right here, meaning we've basically added one element to this set. Now, if we go over to the browser and press refresh, we should, uh, should see that set right here. And if we click on it, we can see the member right here is Mario. Now, we can add more to it if we want to. If we go back to the workbench, I'm gonna say S add again. And then again, we can add a key and a member. Well, it's gonna be names again. This time the member is going to be Yoshi. And this time I want to add more than one. So I can just tack on the rest at the end. So Pete, for example, like so, control enter. And we can see we get a two back here, meaning we've inserted two elements into this set now. And if we go over to the browser and refresh, we can see now we get three members inside this set. Awesome, so that's how we create sets and that's how we add elements to the set. Now, we can also remove elements from a set. So let's go back to the workbench and to do that we say S and then rem for remove, then the key, which is names, and then whatever we want to remove, which is gonna be Yoshi. Control enter and you can see one, we've removed one from the set and Yoshi is no longer there. All right then, so let's first of all create another set and then I'm gonna show you another command called sunion, which basically combines two sets together and gives us the result. So let's create a new set. We'll say s add, we'll call this more names and then we'll add Bowser, um, Link and Zelda. But let's get rid of Bowser. Doesn't feel right being with Link and Zelda. All right, so control enter. So now we have this other set if we refresh, some more names, and we've got Link and Zelda in that, and then Peach and Mario in this one. Now, if we go back to the workbench and use a command called S, oops, capitals S, union, like so, then we want to basically combine the names and the more names. So I can say names, and then more names, get rid of this bit over here, and then I'm gonna control enter, and you can see now, we get back all four together. Now, if we go to the workbench, we've not actually done anything with the original data. We don't create a new set or anything like that. And we don't alter these sets. It's just that what's returned to us is basically a set of those two sets combined. So it takes one, takes the other, joins them together and returns that to us, but it doesn't alter our actual data inside Redis, all right? Okay, so let's do one more. I'm gonna clear down here so we've got a bit of space. Let's do S is member. And what this allows us to do is look inside a set and see whether a value exists or a member exists inside that set. So I could type names here and then the member would be link. Now we know link is not in that name set because it's in more names and we get a zero back, meaning it can't find it. We're gonna get a one back if it does find it. So let's say S is member again and we'll say names for the key. And then this time Peach, control enter, and now we can see one. Let's do one more, S is member, and then more names. Let's look for link again, and press control enter, and we get a one back, awesome, so that works. So there are a few different commands we can use with sets. Again, 
we are probably going to be using sets as we go forward throughout the rest of this series as well, especially when we start working with our own application. As ever, there are other commands you can use when it comes to sets. I just showed you some of the more commonly used ones, which is more than enough to get started with, but definitely check out the docs to see a list of all of the available commands we have for sets if you want to take it a little bit further. And also, we might be using sets later on in the course as well when we work on our small Next.js application with Redis. So we will probably come back to them.